Ladies and gentlemen, fledging is a word that applies to young birds. It describes the process of reaching a stage of development at which they can leave the nest. They can fly. It seems appropriate for a model which emerged from our brains, developed and then took off. But before I tell you about that, I want to add my thanks to those already expressed by Professor Waring to the Marcus Wallenberg Foundation for the award of this prize. For context, we need to appreciate the different points of view held by physiologists working in forest science and foresters. Physiologists are interested in the processes such as photosynthesis, respiration and tree water relations that underlie and determine tree growth. They try to explain differences in growth in terms of those processes, and a great deal of physiological research is at that level. It's not explicitly concerned with the growth of entire trees, even less with the growth of stands, although these are the outcomes of the physiological processes. Foresters, on the other hand, tend to be concerned with the management of forest stands for wood production. They need to know how much wood is in each stand and how fast the stands are growing. Forest inventories, measurement of tree populations and sizes and evaluation of size distribution in stands, have been carried out for more than 200 years in Europe. Sophisticated and complex statistical methods have been developed to analyze the data. These procedures result in empirical models, models based on observations and measurements that do not attempt to provide explanations in terms of biophysical processes for the trends and changes observed. These empirical models have provided foresters with the ability to project expected volume growth of stands, along with that of representative trees, from planting through to harvest, but only on the assumption that conditions affecting growth remain stable. Since empirical stand models provide no explanation for observed differences in forest growth, the reasons for those differences have to be inferred from supplementary information such as soil type and quality, site aspect and rainfall amounts. Such inferences can only lead to general stand productivity estimates. Conventional stand growth models may be able, with sufficient empirical data, to account for management practices such as thinning or fertilization. However, they have difficulties accounting for defoliation caused by insects or diseases, or for responses associated with major shifts in climatic conditions. In 1997, Professor Waring and I, who had known each other for a long time, had the opportunity to work together in Australia, as he has outlined in his acceptance speech for this wonderful prize. We had both been committed for years to the idea of introducing more physiology into forest models, more of the mechanisms, the processes that drive and determine how fast forests grow. So we wanted to develop a process-based forest model. I had been in a series of senior administrative and management jobs and was back at the bench, or the desk in my case. We had more than 50 years of experience between us. We worked well and easily together and had about six months to see whether we could turn our rather vague ideas about process-based forest models into something satisfactory that worked. We were familiar with useful forest growth models that had been written by Steve Running, the forest BGC model, and Ross McMurtry, Biomass, among a number of others. We also recognise that process-based models serve as frameworks for physiological research, within which the different processes can be set in context and their importance and impact assessed. When we got started, things came together quite quickly. We worked through our, our ideas about how this, how this model should look in the classic way, using whiteboards and pen and paper discussed the problems as things took shape, and made decisions about how we might solve them. Several of those decisions were groundbreaking. I'll get to those shortly. The model we came up with, 3PG, Physiological Processes Predicting Growth, so 3Ps and a G, 
was written as a deliberate attempt to bridge the gap between conventional empirical mensuration-based growth and yield models and process-based carbon balance models, that is, models written in terms of the basic processes that together control the amount and structural distribution of tree growth. We aimed to provide information useful to foresters, such as tree numbers, stem diameters, stem basal area per hectare and tree heights. To ecophysiologists who might want to know about changes in biomass above and below ground over time. And to ecologists to explain why some species of trees might do better or worse in varying environments. 3PG was also written with the objective of producing a model that could be used in association with remotely sensed data to scale estimates of stand growth to regions. 3PG is a hybrid model because it combines elements of process-based carbon balance models with allometric constraints to ensure that biomass allocation reproduces typical observed patterns of biomass partitioning in the stand to produce output of immediate relevance to foresters. The time steps are months and the data required to apply the model are basic and easily obtained. The biological core of 3PG consists of submodels for net primary biomass production, allocation of assimilates to various biomass pools, foliage, stems and branches, roots and stem population dynamics. It includes a submodel for plant available soil water. On this occasion I don't have the time or nor would it be appropriate to describe the detail of the submodels and the way they fit together and interact. That has been done in many papers as well as the original publication. And there have been many studies aimed at testing the various components. However, there are two submodels that probably warrant particular attention. The first isn't so much a submodel as an extremely useful empirical relationship which, though much disputed, has stood the test of time and lots of serious examination. This is the solution to the problem of respiration losses. Total canopy photosynthesis or gross primary production, GPP, is calculated from a simple model of radiation interception by the forest canopy. More complex canopy photosynthesis models could be used, but a simple model does the job for monthly time steps. The effects of site and environmental factors on stand level GPP are taken into account using a series of growth modifiers that account for the effects of temperature, soil water and atmospheric vapour pressure deficit, soil fertility and in more recent versions of the model, soil salinity and atmospheric CO2 concentrations. These modify the efficiency with which canopies convert absorbed radiant energy into carbohydrates. The actual biomass, net primary production, available for the forest growth is calculated as GPP minus the fraction lost by respiration. Numerous attempts have been made to model respiration in order to calculate that fraction, which obviously is likely to vary for all sorts of reasons such as stand type, age and environmental conditions. But respiration models tend to be complex and demanding in terms of input data. In our case, Dick went off to the library and searched for the best published measurements or estimates of GPP and NPP in forest stands. He found 12 good data sets and with a little manipulation, plotted NPP against GPP to produce a statistically tight straight line with a slope of 0.47. So that's what we used in 3PG. That relationship has been attacked vigorously from the time it was published, but battered and bruised it still stands as a good engineering approximation. The state of play is probably summarised by a recent review paper by Colalti and Prentice in 2020 that pointed out the shortcomings of the ratio, but ended up saying, quote, the average NPP-GPP ratio in over 200 studies representing different biome biomes, 
species in forest stand ages was found to be 0.46. So we're not going to argue about it anymore. Sometimes someone will no doubt write a respiration model based on appropriate physiological mechanisms at the same level as of complexity, that is stands and monthly time steps, as the rest of 3PG. That produces a stable and accurate value for the NPP GPP ratio. But to our knowledge, such a model does not yet exist. So our engineering approximation will continue to be used. Although because the code for 3PG is open and freely available, anyone who wants to substitute their own relationship to calculate respiration and hence the NPP-GPP ratio is free to do so. The other important submodel in 3PG, which has been a major factor in its success, both as a practical tool and a teaching aid, is the carbon allocation procedure. This procedure allows leaf area index, a crucial variable because it determines how much radiant energy will be absorbed, to vary with growing conditions, but forces the allocation of carbon to stems and branches to follow patterns that lead to realistic structures. Carbon allocation is on a single tree basis. It depends on the fact that there are highly stable functional relationships between different parts of trees as they grow. These are called allometric relationships. They describe, for example, relationships between biomass pools and, conveniently, between biomass pools and stem diameters. Such relationships have been well studied and documented for a wide range of forests and forest species. In 3PG, the proportion of NPP allocated to roots in any growth interval is calculated first. It's strongly influenced by soil moisture and nutrition and varies from a minimum of about 25% to a maximum of about 67% of NPP. The procedure for allocating the remaining NPPs to stems and foliage ensures that the appropriate allometric ratios predicted for stem and foliage mass in terms of stem diameter at breast height are reproduced by the model. Stem diameter is a widely measured and easily checked variable. This is not the venue to discuss this procedure in detail. As I said earlier, that has been done in many papers, as well as the original publication. Also, a very thorough and detailed treatment of all this is available in the book I produced with Peter Sands, called Physiological Ecology of Forest Production, Principles, Processes and Models, if I make, may make a plug for that. 3PG is a conservation of mass model, so net primary production over any interval, which is the mass of carbon available for growth in that interval, must be fully accounted for. The equations for the rate of change of biomass pools are simple differential equations, each of which includes an allocation coefficient. The values of those coefficients must sum to unity. So that's the technical outline. So we come to fledging, an appropriate term for the process we went through in producing 3PG. During the development phase, as we settled on the relationships and equations we needed to make the model work, I programmed it as a large macro to run behind an Excel spreadsheet. I'm not a great programmer, so the result, although it worked well enough for initial tests and calibrations, and could be sent out to a few long-suffering friends and colleagues, was, as someone said, clunky. The model was a rather ugly nestling. But it was good enough for our colleague Nicholas Koops, who worked through the code and rapidly translated it into ArcInfo, so that by the time we published the paper describing the model, we, led by Nicholas, already had a paper estimating forest productivity across some parts of Australia and New Zealand using 3PG. Feathers were growing. The final step in the fledging process came when I sent the model to my very rigorous physicist friend and colleague, Dr. Peter Sands, who was working from Tasmania. Peter said he thought that it was a good model, but would we mind if he reprogrammed it? We said, of course not. So he did. That was the point from which the bird flew. The model was fledged. 
The original paper has been cited more than 1,700 times as of early 2021. Peter produced a superb software package, a powerful, flexible and adaptable Excel add-in. It generates graphics and almost any sort of data needed about forest growth as simulated by 3PG. Over several years, the package has been refined and provided with supporting notes, and the parameters of the model have been determined for a large number of species. Peter and I were adamant that the code should be freely available, which was always my position. Dick had no problem with this. Making software freely available carries the risk that people may alter the code, which anyone can do, and produce results from the model that we may not wish to be associated with. But as far as we are aware, that has seldom, if ever, happened. And the benefits of freely available supported software are enormous. It's available on the 3PG website along with Dick's full class tutorial with examples we have assembled from around the world. We are certain and happy that making the code for 3PG freely available has been a major factor in its successful dissemination and use, both as a research and a management tool around the world. The model is an exercise in science and as such should be available to be tested and hopefully improved, which we believe is happening. We do not subscribe to the view that science is a commercial activity and therefore should be licensed and patented. It is a public, hopefully universally beneficial good. The Wallenberg Foundation provides a great service to forest science and the general community. The prize is an important part of that support. Thank you for your attention. <laughs>